All right, and we are back for some more Beyond Two Souls starting right now. I feel like we're squarely, oops. The condenser zone is on the other side of that door. We've got company. Oh, they haven't seen us yet. It's our only chance. Jesus, I hope you're right. Or a little trip into the info world might come to a sticky end. I feel like the condenser fields would maybe stop the entities from interacting with Jody directly, but it wouldn't stop them from, like, picking up some sharp metal and, you know, hurling it. It's not a force field, it's just anti-ghost. Okay. Or maybe the condensers do Johnny, nothing at all. Johnny, no! Okay, fine, you get it then. Brian just shoves his way up to the front. The black sun. Let's finish this.
it would be amazing if one of the Lost Souls was like Norman Jaden, Ethan Mars. My baby. I lost my baby. Have you seen him? No. No, I... because they don't recognize you anymore. Your anger has changed you. I miss them. I miss them so much. Let me pass, Nathan. The condenser must be destroyed. You know it's the only way. so much. You're the only one who can fix this, Jody. Do it. Do it for me. Jody. looking for. Come on. I I'm just speechless. Son, just take this. Oh no, and do those it. things are gonna slaughter you. Take the damn belt and destroy the fucking condenser. Hey, get out of here before I change my mind. <sighs> All right, I'll tell people fewer bad things about you. We 
inject you with a neuro acid, which will put you in a permanent coma. Exactly what we did with your mother. It's too late, Jody. It's too late. Oh boy, left bumper is in a really fun tap button. We couldn't leave each other. Our souls were bound together. I loved you and hated you for years. You were a part of me. Um... Living, feeling, being in love. I love you, Jody. Growing old. I love you. So many things I still have to do.
Poseidon? We made it. Jody, we made it. Aiden? All right, well, this is nice. We get some percentages this time. Uh, so, 63% refused or postponed Ryan's declaration. Interesting. I'm surprised it's that high. I feel like my feelings towards Ryan are much, much more negative. Uh, we, I did a recording session with More Than a Mia where we talked a lot about Ryan and how wildly inappropriate his advances towards jody r i dislike him I, I like like to be very clear i like the actor a lot i think that the actor who's playing ryan is doing a bang-up job i really do think that he's doing a, sp a b very good job at being just a despicable tool and like that's that's the way the character is written so it's interesting to me to see that it's skewed as high as it is and i'm disappointed that it's not higher than it is 71 percent took the cia money yes i did because Jody's being given a brand new identity. I have no idea if that identity includes any professional credentials, and I don't know how else she's going to make, make, make her way in the world. Yeah, Aiden would potentially have a lot of opportunities for Jody to make money on the side. Any number of, you know, you could probably walk up and just like hack an ATM machine to spit out money for her, but I don't know. And it seems like this is at least some compensation for what they put her through. So yeah, took the money. 78% healed coal. I can't imagine not healing coal. 75% convinced Dawkins to take his own life. I, I, I will confess, I legitimately thought Dawkins was going to shoot Jody in the back after Jody walked past. I, I or, or at least try to. 89% Ryan survived. Boy, I'm not going to lie, I did everything I could to make sure that he wouldn't. 96% uh, shut down the black hole. Interesting. Oh, and 82% chose life. Well, I thought that 96% shutting down the black hole might have, um, might have involved, like, that's the number of people that chose life. And I'll just say this about that, that last decision. Those people that Jody loves that are on the other side will still be there tomorrow and the week after that and the year after that and the decade after that like for jody there's going to be plenty of time to die later it's not something that can be postponed indefinitely so when jody i didn't know what the light side or the dark side meant also i believed at first that i was making a permanent choice and when it became clear when she looked out at life and she said among other things like growing old and whatever else she might have said there's all these things that she hasn't done yet you only ever get those things if you choose that side if you go over towards like the the other side you'll you'll get to spend that time with the people that matter to you that you care about but you'll never have the opportunity to do the stuff on the right side of the screen so that's what i was thinking about I think that Jody's life has been really, really hard. I don't think it's been hard to the point where she doesn't want to see what else it might hold for her. That Maybe that's just my read on it. Epilogue. Okay. Just after the prologue. Oh. 
going to know what happens if you don't shut down the condenser. Ever since the Black Sun was destroyed, my memory has been disintegrating. I spent too much time on the other side. Now it's eating away at my mind, erasing what's left of it. My memories are all confused, slowly self-destructing, fading like a dream when you wake up. I'm losing my sense of time. I no longer know what happened before or after. Everything's playing inside my head at the same time. It's like watching the same film looping over and over again. A chaos of images with no order. So I've been writing night and day for weeks, trying to put my life down on paper. If I forget everything, these pages will be my memory. Three months after the fact, the investigation continues in an effort to determine the cause of the accident that cost 283 lives on a Pentagon military base. Government representatives confirm that the authorities are working hand in hand with the investigators to shed light on this appalling tragedy. The CIA is leaving me alone for the moment. I suppose they're too busy building another condenser to worry about me. I know they'll never abandon their experiments, now that they know what's on the other side. Honestly, I don't give a damn. Now I need to reconstruct my life. My life without Ida. For as long as I can remember, I dreamt of living without him. Untied, without his constant presence by my side. I got what I wanted. I've never been so unhappy in my life. I feel like part of me has been amputated. Crying all day. I know it's stupid. Shit. I miss him so much. took months, months of nothing passing by. Then I woke up. I knew it was time, time to start again, to build a new life. Who were Jay and Zoe? Oh, was Zoe Tuesday? Oh, and then there's Jay. Okay, I remember Jay. Was Zoe Tuesday? I kind of feel like that's who it was. And it's certainly not going to be Ryan. I feel like it's time. I think it's good. You know, let's go for a clean break here. It's so obvious. Deep inside, I, I always knew. I just needed the silence around me. To hear what I was feeling. I told Ryan I couldn't see my future with him. We've been through too many difficult times together. 
the times I want to forget. He said he understood that he'd wait as long as it takes. I know I felt something for him, but it just wasn't strong enough. How could I live a normal life again after all I've been through? Hell, who wants to live a normal life anyway? A boyfriend, a job, counting the days till my next vacation. I wanted it for so long, but I finally realized that that life wasn't for me. So I took to the road. I've seen many rifts to the other side, hundreds of them all over the country. Homes where strange things happen, motel rooms that no one ever wants to sleep in again. Entities are all around us. They live in our houses, sleep in our beds. They're with us every second of every day. I know they're lurking in the shadows. I've missed you. I see things at night. Terrifying things. I tell myself it's only nightmares. I know it's not true. Once Pandora's box is open, it can never be closed again. No, it's not nightmares. It's what is about to happen. I've died twice already. I'm not afraid of death anymore. I'm going to risk, I do not want to skip the credits, but I would like to turn it down so that we can talk a little bit about it over the credits. So hold on just a moment. Hopefully this does not skip. All right. And I think that that is continuing to uh, roll forward and hopefully won't 
Well, hold on. Why do we have no sound? Hold on. Alright, well, as far as I can tell, the game's sound is cut out altogether, but the credits continue to roll, so we'll let it continue to do that. I am very, very glad that after we record this, we're going to be able to, or I'm going to be able to talk to uh, twitch.tv slash more than Amia about this, because I cannot possibly begin to hope to organize all of my thoughts about this experience um just a couple thoughts off the top of my head first of all i don't hate this game as much as many other people uh, i remember that especially over at game informer for example some some folks that i really enjoy their perspective and i and i like their thoughts on on games and stuff multiple editors there had extremely negative opinions on this. Uh, I actually was actually seeing a video recently where Andrew Reiner uh, brought up just in passing how much he disliked this game. And I remember Joe Juba saying at one point that he, that it's very, very long uh, for what it is. And those sort of opinions were in my head, but I didn't know anything beyond that. Like they're also very careful about not spoiling things, which I certainly respect a lot. So I don't, hate the game that much however this is for sure the weakest of the quantic dream games that i have played which i believe at this moment is all of them that have been released as of 2020 uh sorry did i say the weakest it is um it's not as bad it's not as confused as indigo prophecy Indigo Prophecy is an example of what happens when you have some interesting ideas, but very little idea on how to execute them, and there's no editors involved that can tell you that some of your ideas are really, really nutso and need to be cut out of the script. Beyond Two Souls is technically more proficient in every way and yet nowhere near it feels as technically proficient or coherent as either Heavy Rain or Detroit Become Human, two games which I'm not going to describe beyond simply saying that they had better controls, a more coherent story, and a better feeling of like choice as you were going. I'll also say that this epilogue clarified something that if you've been listening along to the recordings that um, I've done with Mia, a topic that we've discussed many times over is why is the story told non-linearly? And here in the epilogue, we do get an explanation that we are, we're reliving these events by way of Jody's jumbled, confused recollection. And the process that we're going through in piecing together how these interactions and relationships matter is a process that Jody, the character, is going through as well, and that that's sort of the goal of it. I still don't think it works. Uh, Beyond Two Souls continues to feel like a a product that was made that sees people enjoy movies uh, and stories told out of sequence, but with very little concept of why. I feel like in order for a nonlinear story to work, we would have needed to have certain things like see the outcome of actions before the actions themselves, see sudden turns in relationships that uh, we don't know why they happen until we get a little bit more context. I'm very worried that we're going to get a like a post credit sequence here and there will be no sound. That would be very disappointing. Let me just make sure that there's nothing in the headphones either. Hold on just one second. I was uh, talking a little bit. Yeah, no, this is dead silent. From Maria and Mercedes, from the Infra World, I know you're watching me. Oh, hey, epilogue choice. Okay, so we still get no sound, but... Boy, that's weird that we get no sound. Uh, 12% chose to stay alone. Yes, uh, so if I was to choose, if I was to talk about that one singular choice... I just didn't perceive any chemistry at all between Jody and Jay 
it took me a second to even remember who Jay was. And it's not that I wouldn't have wanted to go check in on Zoe, but if if there was some implication of a romantic relationship there, I certainly didn't pick up on that either. Jody didn't really interact with Tuesday all that much, aside from assuring her that uh, that her baby was going to be okay. They didn't spend very much time together. If there was something there, maybe I just overlooked it or I didn't have the necessary interactions. I, I would have, if, if, if I'd perceived something more there. But ultimately, the reason I chose alone over even exploring that as a possibility was simply that Jody has spent her entire life with a co-pilot. She's never been alone. She's never been in a space entirely by herself the most that she's ever been able to achieve is Aiden would leave her be for a while so I felt like in order to find some sort of happiness or peace first she would need to learn to be alone and like I like you heard me say maybe build something new that's what that's where I was thinking about it also before I forget to say this I thought it was a bold choice and I actually would have gone further with it that when Jody comes face to face with Aiden in that like Elysian field there at the end, that you don't get a good look at Aiden. And the longer it went without showing him, and I started to realize that that might be where that went, then I was disappointed that you do at least get a glimpse of him there at the end because. The the longer that went on, the more enthusiastic I was about like, oh, they're still not going to show him. Like, this is Aiden in his adult human form, and we're not going to get to see that. But Jody does, just like Jody has always been able to perceive Aiden as sort of a black blur. Here, she gets to see Aiden as he would have appeared in life if he had survived. Now, I did have one question. And since I'm pre-recording this, this is very much a rhetorical question. It sounded like one of the doctors said something about he's. It sounds like like under all other circumstances, I would believe that Aiden simply died in childbirth. It sounded like somebody said something about the umbilical cord getting wrapped around. I really don't want to dwell on that because it's a it's a real thing that I know has happened and I just will just move right past that. But I I I at least briefly wondered if I saw a movie once where I was trying to work out if either Aiden or Jody in the womb had been responsible for killing Aiden because there's talk about their parents being, uh, you know, being gifted. Maybe the, the, the infants, the fetuses were communing with spirits. Maybe the doctors didn't understand what was going on and some sort of entity got to Aiden. I was just sort of trying to think if there was something more there. And I feel like if, if that was in any way clarified, it's left unclear. Another thing that this left unclear that I just haven't been able to let go of because the characters never address it is did Cole call the government, pardon me, the DPA to come get Jody? Did did he tip them off on where they were going to be? Because I, I, I simultaneously can't quite work out the idea that Jody and that, that Jody is cool with that. It's the same way that I can't really work out the idea that Cole was cool with Jody like taking his body for a ride when she wanted to go out for a night on the town and then walk him off into the woods. There's there's some events that ha- occur between Jody and Cole that the two of them just never seem to reconcile. There's no closure to that. Um but also like I can't I can't quite understand why his line upon when she comes out and finds people with guns aimed at her head, his hands are up like, uh, you know, interlaced but be- be- behind, behind his head. But what he says is, I'm sorry, Jody. He doesn't say they came out of nowhere. He said, Jody, I had no idea. He just says, I'm sorry. Which, again, feels like a de facto confession. It's a very odd thing that they just never bring it up. Maybe we are meant to wonder. I'm going to press A for next. I'm very worried that it's like 
gonna have some sort of post credit thing. Oh, well, it does not. And then we've got this. So, yeah, and the volume is still nice and down. So, a, a couple final thoughts. Uh, the cast was great. Um, it is no surprise that Willem Dafoe did a great job. I have seen very, very, very few things in my entire life that uh, where Elliot Page is acting. I think I mentioned at the very beginning that I remember a series of like AT&T commercials that he was a part of. And as they were airing, I had no idea who that was. There, it wasn't until midway through when like another character introduced like a, a, a classroom of kids to, hey everyone, it's Elliot Page. And I still didn't know who that was because I had never seen Juno or many of the other things that he's been in. Oh, oh, you know what I did see was um, Elliot Page is in not Memento, not Tenant, not The Dark Knight. What is it? Uh, Inception, which might be the one and only thing that I ever saw him in. And I just didn't come away with much thought one way or the other. My, my like when I think of Inception... Uh, the character of Ariadne, who is that's who that's the name of the character that Elliot Page, uh, Page plays, is just not memorable to me in that piece. It's so much more the visuals and the uh, there's a lot of other things that we'll just skip right over that I remember in Memento. So this uh, of all things, Beyond Two Souls is probably the most acting that I've seen, and I thought he did a great job. I, I'm also very mindful of when acting in this environment, something that I touched on in an earlier commentary, it's very abstract. The actors are wearing motion body suits. They might be wearing those dots all over their faces to capture their like facial expressions. They might have a camera with a light that's just like inches from their face to like uh, record that as well on top of everything else. And there's often no scenery. There might be a couple props. I don't know how this game was made, but I've seen clips of how like The Last of Us was made. And it's, it is like the purest form of acting because you are pretending that you're even in a space, much less like, like in a costume or, or having any of those, uh, any, any of those other accoutrements. It, it, it is all playing pretend. And I thought that the cast all around did a great job. I must again say, I was particularly impressed by the actor that played Ryan, because as, as much as I talked about how much I dislike Ryan, it certainly wasn't aimed at the actor or the performance. I think that if we were not meant to really dislike Ryan, I don't know what they were going for, but the actor that played Ryan nailed it. He, he nailed the... The, the overconfidence, the the sneering dismissiveness, I I came away really thinking that he did a great job. Cole was, I really like Cole, like, personally. I don't know that the actor got a chance to, like, stretch very much because, like, I think Mia and I talked about it. Uh, sorry, Mia and I talked about it. There needed to be a scene where Cole was angry, indignant, betrayed about what Jody did to him, marching him off into the woods in this, like, uh, possessed stupor. And we don't get that. We never see the fallout for that. There's room in this story for Cole to show a lot more emotional depth, and it just, it just doesn't happen. And then before I before I wrap up, we have got to talk about like some of the some of the closing stuff. And I, like I'm putting my hand on my face. That thing with uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Northrop, uh, Doctor Defoe, Willem Defoe. Like okay, a couple thoughts because we didn't really get a chance to talk about it. And I'm I'm very much looking forward to talking to Mia about these things. That scene where he like let Jody into like the secret back room and he turned the machine on and it immediately just immediately showed the 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 wraiths of his wife and daughter and they're screaming silently they're pleading with him they're reaching out and it's so obvious it's so clear that this is not that they're that they're desperate for him they're desperate for him to stop their pain that they're in agony that they're trapped they're caged here it's 
it's it's immediately horrifying and he's just oh they're with me like like soon we'll be together and there's it was like i did not perceive beyond two souls as being a horror game until that scene and to a very large extent it may only be a horror game in that one scene, but man, that worked. And I, I, I was thinking the reason that I wanted to commune with them is that I wanted to give their suffering voice since he was so plainly incapable of hearing their silent cries for release. I thought, let me allow them to say it aloud. And honestly, I thought that when Jody like, like, was speaking for them, like, like allowed them to use her, that it was just gonna be howling. I thought it was just gonna be like unearthly wailing because they seemed to be in such pain. And instead, if, if they were gonna say anything, I would have liked them to say more. Uh, like you have to let us go. You, that's all. That's all she got to say. But there was so much more to be said there. They looked. Whew, sorry, that 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 image is going to be with me. But then then we get to like some things where <sighs> Doctor Defoe turns off the 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 isolation field. All the race come out and start murdering people. He goes in there, and I'm trying to remember at this. He did have a, an isolation suit, didn't he? Like that field over him, which, by the way, still super confuses to what that even does, given that one of the wraiths just manages to punch right through Cole. But any event, um, he goes in there and he's like searching for his wife and daughter, which itself is so sad. It's so, it's so dark. And then he shoots himself in the head instantly manifests as a spiritual version of himself and then his wife and daughter run up and he embraces them and it's this heartfelt family reunion literally taking place over his dead body and he looks over at jody having now accomplished everything that he wanted and says now now you have to turn it off. You're the only one that can. What? What? Did he think better of his plan? What? How? It is hard to watch that scene and not come away with the impression that lead writer David Cage is saying the ends justify the means and if you can't find what you want in life, suicide will get you there faster. It's a super weird scene. I don't know what was being thought there. As I said after that happened, I was completely speechless. I did not know what to say, and I'm not sure that I do now. That was a lot all at once. I, let's see, was there anything else? Because this actually turned out to be rather longer than I had expected it to be for a final recording session. I really should have bounced these into two, but that is, I, I thought we were so close to the end. Who would have thought there was a ni another 90 minutes? Uh, I think it's usually better to have episodes that are slightly too long than super short, but that's something else. Uh, the good news is where normally it is the case that we only ever get the opportunity to talk about these things during the closing credits and then never again, I will have at least a short amount of time to collect my thoughts and then have a conversation with more than a Mia. So there will be, I hope, at least one more video in this series where Mia and I will get to compare notes on what has happened in these last few episodes, followed by our overall thoughts in the game. Uh, and I will sort of end on that where I began. I would not <laughs> recommend this game. I, I didn't hate it as much as others. I feel like it had, uh, as you might have heard in the conversations with Mia, some real control deficits. I feel like the controls in this game are a rather remarkable step back from what was done in Heavy Rain and that they course corrected in Detroit Become Human because that has just much better controls all, all, all around. 
I don't really know when or if any of my choices really uh, affected the story, which is fine. I'm not a, like, I'm not, I'm not super keyed in on that as being the most important thing. However, that is something that was, it felt very present, especially in both Heavy Rain and uh, Detroit Become Human, where I felt like you could really see at multiple points how your decisions were influencing the characters and and other elements of the story. So to have it be much murkier here doesn't, I think, speak well to the narrative design. So we wind up with something that is mechanically less than the other games that surround it and narratively a big confused mess i like there's also things in it oh boy there's a lot to say the like the entire chapter called navajo that entire thing where uh, she was hanging out with jay cody and paul oh and grandmother and aside from the fact that you see grandmother and paul at the very end who i mean it's good that jody thinks well of them but they don't really have a lot in common. They were only acquainted for a couple days, so I'm not sure that, like, that wasn't an enticing beckoning towards the afterlife. Like, you know, I like Paul too, but I'm not ready to go spend eternity with him. So those are my thoughts. But the, like, what I was going getting at is that, like, that whole chapter, if that whole Navajo chapter was just not in the story at all, the only thing they'd have to remove was Jay as being a choice of like people to go hang out with at the end. That's the only other thing that would change. That entire chapter, as fully as I can remember, had no impact anywhere else in the story. I don't begrudge its existence. I'm not saying that it should be removed. I'm saying this story felt very haphazard. It felt like it had a big, huge pile of different, unrelated ideas. It felt like it was several small scripts that were kind of edited together and, and shuffled around to try to fall fit it into one story. But that's not fully accurate either, because it's not like every chapter was a big mess. It's not like... I mean, I, I, I guess you could say the same thing about the homeless chapter as well, that if that was excised from the story, it wouldn't really affect anything else. I guess I felt like homeless more than Navajo, homeless showed the positive impact that Jody can have on the people around her and that she's so rarely given the opportunity to do that. Navajo showed that because Jody has a ghost friend, she can fight ghosts, which was something that we already knew based on other events in the story. So that particular uh, element, like it's not that I don't like Jody helping people, it was the way in which she had helped people. And if, if, if Navajo had centered on a totally unrelated supernatural thing, or something that, I think I talked to me about this, or something that had, that seemed supernatural and had no supernatural element to it at all, or just, I don't know, fucking assholes coming over and like harassing the family and Jody's able to like resolve that in a way that threatens to expose her power and she has to come to grips with that, those all would have been more interesting than what it was, which is, oh, by the way, it's the exact same style of rift with the exact same entities that Jody and Jody alone is capable of dealing with. Jody just so happened to stumble across this, thank goodness. And that's a little bit weird. Any other thoughts I have, we will cover with more than Amiya. Uh, she is currently uh, doing her hiatus, so we will hopefully catch up with her live once she returns from that. But in the meantime, these videos and this entire playthrough is intended for you, the viewer. Uh, it's a big thank you to the people who subscribe to the channels. We wanted to make sure that there was sufficient content out there to cover her hiatus. And I was very, very happy uh, and honored to be able to participate in this because there's nothing that brings a narrative game to life quite like being able to talk to somebody as you're going through it so the way that we were able to structure this so that we're talking about it as we do our first playthroughs and we get those interactions with one another in addition to the ones that we have with the game i think that that's really elevated this experience and it is one that i've had a great time with we're going to call it there you guys thank you so much and i hope you have a great day